r slash credit. What is the worst thing that happened at your school? I'm just going to copy paste a story I've told in another thread years ago. Our senior class valedictorian was murdered by her gangbanger boyfriend just months before graduation. She was this super smart, 4.0 student, helped motivate classmates to do well in school, I was one, she helped me pass classes my sophomore year, just to be a good person, but had a thing for thugs, loved guys in gangs, and you'd never know it, because she was your typical well-dressed, well-to-do white girl living in a farming town. Anyway, she broke up with this guy, and he started stalking her, and had to get a restraining order, and all kinds of other crazy shit happened. Well, after some serious drama, when he showed up, and threatened to kill her, yelling that if he couldn't have her nobody could, and the police essentially did nothing about it, he waited in the bushes for her dad to leave for work the next morning. Snuck in through her window that morning, and shot her in the head while she slept. Killed himself too. Dad got home and found them both dead after work. It rocked us to our core. I always remember that as the experience that made me hate the news media. They were bombarding us with questions, filming us crying and grieving. We all starting walking to classes outside with our middle fingers up so they wouldn't have any footage to use. It worked for the most part. I dealt with death plenty with grandparents dying up to that point. But when it's unexpected and sudden for someone that hasn't even gotten old enough to vote yet, that's fucking rough. I see pictures of her pop up every year when people mourn the anniversary of her death and it's so sad to think of how much she'll never experience because some douche couldn't handle her not wanting him. Her family sued the police department for that and won a fucking mountain of money. When dad was interviewed about it, the only thing he could say through his tears was my daughter is still dead. This money isn't going to make that pain any easier. I just wanted the police to change their ways so nobody else has to go through this. If I'm not mistaken, the whole department was fired almost immediately after and he donated all that money to charity. <laughs> Classmate died in a car wreck my junior year. He was an A student, athlete, good looking, popular, never in trouble. He died because he was in a car W slash a few kids who decided to buy beer illegally. He was in the front passenger seat. A cop got behind them and flipped his lights on because they were speeding and they ran for it knowing the beer would be a problem. They turned their headlights off, it was at night, thinking they'd be harder to see. They proceeded to hit a tree. The classmate in question had unbuckled his seatbelt to try and hide the beer under the seat as much as possible in case they got caught. When they hit the tree, he was thrown forward and broke his neck, dying instantly. The others in the car suffered only minor bumps and bruises. Edit I also work at a school. Worst thing I've heard of here is from 6 years before I started. I started in 1997 and this happened in 1991 or so. A male student was caught in the parking lot in his truck W slash several loaded guns and a list of teachers and students he intended to kill. He was only caught because he tried to recruit a friend the night before who turned him in. He was up all night planning and fell asleep in his truck in the school parking lot. The school I work at would have been Columbine before Columbine if he'd not been turned in. It was all hushed up and the media never really caught wind of it from what I understand. Freshman year was full of excitement. Here's a small list with what the school collectively decided was the worst at the end. Our school was next to a hospital and the hospital had a ton of construction going on. The workers hit a gas line and it leaked into the school. We had to get evacuated and stood in an empty lot a block away for two hours in the summer heat before they actually cancelled school. A deer delayed the start of classes in the winter by rampaging through the basement of the school destroying lockers and breaking glass and stuff. Some jackasses would randomly spray mace in the most crowded hallway after pulling the fire alarm. This went on pretty often for a few months before the team of culprits was caught. During fifth period one day, our school got put on lockdown. A man did an armed robbery a block away at Osco's drug and ran into our school to hide. All lights were turned off. Doors barricaded. Entire classes were crowded in the corners of their rooms not visible from the door. We stayed that way for over an hour. 
Cops and dogs were all over our school. A lot of kids were freaking out. Once the school was deemed safe, the school officials decided we should just remain in our fifth hour class for the rest of the day. For a lot of kids, I learned afterwards, this meant they had pop quizzes for the remainder of school. Most kids had more class walk tacked on, it seemed. My class, however, had a big party the whole time. It was English, and we were doing presentations of how-to essays. Some kids brought in pizza for the class and explained how it was made. One girl brought in Kool-Aid. One boy brought his XBOX to explain how to put LED lights on it, so we had video games too. It was pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> Been waiting to yell this story on here for a long time. I live in a rural town, not much to do around here. Well one day this lad, let's call him Joe, gets it up in his head that it'll be a fun idea to fuck a cow. Why? I couldn't tell you, I tried to talk him out of it, but he said no, he was gonna do it just because. He had had girlfriends, that is, sex, before and cold gotten one, if he wanted to, so I don't know why he decided to go through with this. So anyways, he goes ahead and does the deed. Had sex with a cow. He's all proud of himself because he's done this thing that no one else has done and he's trying to brag about it. I again tell Joe that it's a bad idea to brag about it. He had his fun. Just let it go. But he said he thought everyone would get a real kick out of it at school and had already made up his mind to tell everyone about it the next day. Okay Joe, you do you. It's not gonna work out for ya though. So he tells everyone, and what a you know, no one thought it was funny. No one laughed. Everyone thought he was a creep, naturally so, and he instantly became a social outcast. Damn it Joe. Now you'd think the story would end there, but no. It gets worse. A few weeks later his dad killed the cow. They had been raising it for meat, and it was the time of the year. So Joe has this idea that'll recover his social status and make him a school hero. A last ditch attempt to become popular if you will. He takes the head of the cow, still with skin and eyes and all on there, puts it in a trash bag and sneaks it into with him. He gets to class early that day, makes sure there's no one around and gently places the head onto of the teacher's chair and tucks it back into the desk. If you didn't know it was there you wouldn't see it, until it was too late, until you pulled out the chair. Now this wasn't the worst idea I guess. He chose Mrs. Wheeler as his victim, and everyone hated that old bat. So I guess I'm away his logic made sense, pranking her world restored some social standing. But he definitely went about it the wrong way. So class is starting, everyone's in their seats, and in comes the teacher. Except it's not Mrs. Wheeler. It's a sub. A young new teacher, who had little experience with teaching. Oh Joe. So she pulls out the chair, and immediately screams at the top of her lungs and falls backwards. The eyes were bulging out, tongue hanging out, blood dripping onto the floor, the whole shebang. And Joe's in the back of the class just laughing and laughing. Absolutely loses his shit. Thinks he's so fucking funny. And a few other kids did chuckle and all, but they couldn't see the head behind the desk. They didn't know why the sub screamed and fell backwards, just that she did. Eventually a few students got up and checked it out, and boy oh boy did they scream. No one was laughing then, besides Joe of course. Long story short, the sub who fell backwards ended up breaking her coccyx and quickly dropped teaching as a career. Joe was expelled, obviously, and no one's heard much about him since then. That was a few years back. At least once a day someone makes a joke about Joe the cow fucker. I still feel bad. Besides his social ineptness and mild sadistic streak he really was a nice guy. Was always good at Mario Kart, kinda miss him. Edit, to clarify, I meant that I miss how we were friends before he showed his sadistic side. Don't really miss him so much as the good times we had together before all this shit went down, slash. There was a scandal at my school involving sodomy. Apparently during summer school, a high school, there was a woodworking class or masonry class or something like that where there were a lot of students. Since there were many students, the school provided two to three classrooms in order to fit them all in the course. 
However, there was only one teacher, so he couldn't keep an eye on every single student, because there were students in each room. Apparently some kid, or kids, shoved one of those thick metal wires used for construction up another kid's ass, while others were holding the poor kid. I don't know how much of the story is true, but that was the rumor that was going around, so it didn't matter if it was true or not, because the damage was made. The kids got arrested the victim was moved to another school and the main sodomizer framed the teacher so that his sentence wouldn't be as harsh. The case went on for about 4 years until the teacher was proven innocent. He was freed but unfortunately, he will never be able to be a teacher again, even if he was innocent. <laughs> to preface, I went to a school with a reputation of being the most elite prep school in my area. Grade 9. There was this kid who was allowed in on bursaries in an attempt to make the school seem more affirmative and not just full of rich kids. This kid was troubled and never felt like he fit in which led to him causing several fights and threats to all level of students and administrators. Following one particularly nasty threat over Facebook the police got involved and picked him up. At the time he was trying to be flashy and would come to school with just wads of cash which everyone found kind of odd, including the police. This suspicion along with the fact that he was getting kicked out of school meant they had to go through his locker and get all of his stuff out for him. In doing so they found large quantities of drugs, weed, opiates, and a little coke I believe. Kid was never allowed back in and the vetting became much more intense for the bursary program. I don't believe he served any time because I played football against him two years later and was still an angry individual who made numerous threats about how he was going to fuck my pretty boy ass and show me how public school boys play ball. He wasn't that good, so his threats just seemed laughable to me. Grade 12, we were on a winning streak, not losing a game in four years, and as a result come homecoming we needed to throw a wild party. Said party took place in some farmer's fields hidden by bushes. During this party everyone gets extremely drunk and this is where the problems start to arise. One girl gets alcohol poisoning, or drug not sure, and loses all control, starts biting people helping her, and trying to run away. Another girl goes completely missing and no one finds her until like 0400. The next week it comes out that the missing girl claimed she was raped and didn't know by who but everyone assumes it was a football player. The next day all players get called into our auditorium and one of the administrators tells us what's happening and we might be contacted by the media and under new terms were we allowed to talk about what happened and not to worry because he will protect us all from anything going down. Super fucked. Three weeks later after all of this hysteria and everyone questioning who they thought could have done this the girl comes forward stating she wasn't raped and was just lost and assumed it must have happened to her in order for her to not know where anyone was until 4. So while nothing sinister actually happened that we know for sure, it's left me with this fucked up memory of a school administrator trying to keep a potential rapist safe from his day in court. I could be wrong and the guy had a better grasp of the situation than I had at the time and knew that nothing was happening and didn't want us to incriminate ourselves for underage drinking and trespassing on a farmer's property, but in the moment I was shocked and sickened by what I heard. I went to a progressive high school where 90% of the kids were white, including me but that's irrelevant. It was very uncool to be racist at my school, especially toward black people. Cue a string of overnight break-ins at our school over the course of a couple weeks, resulting in dollar sign 50-100k worth of computers, av equipment, projectors, marching band instruments, etc etc being stolen. The school security and outreach officer was black, one of the few black people on our campus. Word got out that administration wanted to investigate our black security officer, who was in charge of securing doors slash gates slash general access at our school, when everyone was gone for the day. Well, us super wise and all knowing white kids freaked out and basically called the administration racists, because they wanted to investigate the black security officer, who had become a friend of ours over the years, and was the only black person a lot of the white kids knew personally, so when admin wanted to investigate him a lot of us took offense, he was our friend. 
the administration either heeded or pretended to heed our warning and pretended to call off the investigation. A few weeks later our black security officer and friend disappeared suddenly without warning or explanation. Administration had carried out an investigation on him quietly and, with the help of local undercover police, was found to be the primary culprit, with help from his buddies that had no association with our school. Man. The feeling of betrayal. Our school never recovered from all that lost equipment over the course of my career there. Jude was to faced smiles and slapping hands with us in the morning, taking our shit that we can't afford to replace in the evening. I felt bad for the very few black kids that went to our school. A lot of white kids tunes changed after the incident and acted as if the black students were just as responsible. Sat. Humans are jerks. Doesn't matter what color you are. We all have the capacity to hurt each other and we should be careful with that power. There was this kid at my school who had moved into town recently to finish off year 12. Let's call him Billy. Originally Billy lived in some outback town where the school was shit, so moved in with his grandparents to do the subjects he needed to get into university. He was fairly shy at school but get some drinks into him at a party and he had the most outrageous stories about what him and his friends got up to back home. Drugs, fights, orgies, you name it, he had done it. Most of us figured he was just making shit up to fit in, but let him go on because his stories were hilarious, and he had a cool car that he'd take us out for drive-in. A few of the more popular kids got a bit upset by it all and started to talk shit about him behind his back. I guess he was stealing some of their limelight, and they didn't like it. One night at a party Billy ended up getting drunk with a girl in our class and ended up eating her out in the middle of the lounge room floor when most of us had crashed out. One of the popular kids had a thing for this girl and took it pretty bad. I think he may have been sleeping just next to them at the time. After that, poor Billy got bullied mercilessly. He was spat on, called all sorts of names, had bottles of bus thrown on him. No one was allowed to talk to him. It was pretty fucked. He didn't retaliate in any way, just started hanging out in the library every break and never went out on the weekends. Until someone decided to smash his car up one night when it was parked in his driveway. The police got involved, but no one told them anything so nothing came of it. A few weeks later there was this huge party getting thrown just out of town. The bullies decided to rub it in by telling Billy about it and daring him to turn up so they could fuck him up like they did his car. Party night comes, and they are all laughing about how Billy is probably at home pissing himself scared. Until he turned up, walked straight up to them, and just pointed at them. Next thing these 10 blokes come running out of the darkness with baseball bats and chains, and start laying into them. I fucking shit myself and ran. These blokes were fucking huge. I remember one of them yelling this is what happens to cunts that fuck with Billy. They roughed them up. But no one was badly injured, so it was just to scare them. By the time the police turned up, the blokes had disappeared. I don't know how they weren't caught, there was only one road in and out of the house and they would have passed the police on the way out. The rumor was that Billy was connected and the police were tipped off or something, but I just think they were lucky. Billy didn't get bullied after that. I have two things that happened at my former high school, as to which one is worse, that's up to you guys to consider. This one's about to be a long read, by the way. Seven years ago during 10th and 11th grade, the school systematically expelled students they didn't see fit to be at our school. They would find the smallest thing to pin them on and use that as cause for expulsion. For two years that happened, and some good friends of mine had to get switched. I still talk to some of them but many ended up moving too far away to schools outside the Los Angeles Unified School District. All that just to keep up their image of being a great school. People were angry about it, yet my school never received the backlash. The second thing that happened to our school was related to our most recent principal. One fact to mention is that this particular high school actually taught 4th grade to high school. I was one of the students that actually went there for the whole 9 years, so I saw a couple principals in my time. Our first one 
who retired around my time in 10th grade, was an outstanding principal, one who fit the great image the school once had. After he retired, that's when it all went downhill. For 10th grade to halfway through 11th, we cycled through three interim principals who were pretty bad, but nowhere near as bad as the next one to come. Let's call her Ms. H. Ms. H really caused the school to go to shit. I'm talking really crappy levels of upkeep, teams, and clubs being cut out, financial problems that affected everyone, new rules that didn't make sense, and even falling asleep during the morning announcement she was giving, meetings with parents, and certain big crowd events where she's supposed to be talking. On top of all that, she mumbled everything she said, so everything she did say was basically moot. Now I'm not downplaying anyone who can't project their voice, but there should be some level of articulation when you're a school principal. The worst part? She still had this job for 4 years after I left. One particular thing that was a little bit of a last straw for everyone was her implementation of bully-free zones. The idea was somewhat good, but not when the bully-free zones are literally 3 feet by 3 foot squares placed sporadically around a few areas within the school. The idea was that once you ran into a square, an administrator would come to work out the issue. What this achieved actually was far more concentrated bullying. No one could see the squares from the main office or cafeteria area, so when kids would run to one, especially for the younger kids, this only made them a target for teasing and some physicality. Now here's where things got dirty. An investigation opened up by the district when too many parents complained, involving a planted administrator to report back anything out of the ordinary. What came out of that investigation was that it turned out Ms. H had terrible dementia, even before she came to our school, that she was good friends with someone high up within the ranks of the district, and they had promised her the job, and to not worry, as long as that person was in charge. Ms. H was fired, and so was her friend in the school district. The school has started to return to its former glory. This is gonna take some backstory. I went to a small private high school, only a little over a hundred kids total. I say high school, but it actually taught all the way down to 6th grade. Anyway, the owner of the school, we didn't use words like principal, I guess they were trying to go for a friendlier feel, who was also the founder, was a pretty hardcore narcissist. Not really in an I'm better than you kind of way, more like, the world is blessed by my presence and everything I do, and touch becomes better. The school was in an office complex, so there were signs in the parking lot. Well, apparently, Miss Perfect needed both a sign for the school and for herself. Oddly enough, she was rarely even there. But hey, we weren't complaining. The less we have to listen to her crap about values and attitude and stuff the better. Now, Mrs. Ego claimed to be a big advocate of family values. Funny thing is, her grandson was a student at the school, a year older than me. He was a surprisingly cool guy, considering his grandmother's quirks. Well, it turns out his side of the family wasn't what one might call friendly with her side. In fact, he didn't get any help when it came to getting into the school. His parents literally went bankrupt paying for him to attend. One of her granddaughters, on the other hand, who happened to be on the right side of the family, got to be in every school play and talent show, despite the fact that she wasn't even a student yet. She was 7. Anyway, Ms. Narcissist clearly cared a lot about her favorite family members. Her son was the photography teacher. Her brother-in-law was. Actually, I don't quite know what he was. He just liked to wander around the school and interrogate students at water fountains or on their way to the bathroom as to why they weren't in class. But the real bad thing happened with regards to the aforementioned son. Child porn. Over 80 counts of child porn on his phone, computer, and, yes, one of the school's computers. Thankfully, none of it was of any of the students. Thankfully, he was caught. Thankfully, he's no longer allowed anywhere near a school, regardless of if his mommy owns it or not. I found this out over the weekend when a friend texted me and told me to go to a local news site with the story on it. By Sunday, pretty much the whole school knew. The Dean of Students, 
who was actually a decent guy, not related to the owner and smart enough to put up with her bullshit, while still seeing it for what it was, sent out an email assuring students and parents that school was not cancelled Monday and there would be a school-wide meeting soon to address what happened. Well, it took about a week for Madame Umbridge to hold the meeting. I have to be honest, I was curious how someone like her would react to her son getting arrested for child pornography. Her little speech started out okay. Then it got shaky. My son made a mistake, and he hopes you all can learn from his mistake. Well, okay, um, I'm not sure how you can make the same mistake over 80 times and not realize it's wrong, and I'm not exactly sure what us kids are supposed to learn from that, but we are not defined by our mistakes. Many of you have made mistakes, and that's why you're here. Honestly, I'm surprised nobody in the room flipped out at her. Many of the students had severe emotional and or mental issues, and there have been meltdowns over far less. I guess we were all just so shocked that we didn't know how to respond. So after bitchy McBlammer shift was done, we went back to class and tried to rationalize how anyone with even an iota of the moral fiber she claims to have could try and turn the guilt of her son's illegal perversions onto innocent children. Not necessarily the worst thing, but he caused the worst stuff that happened at my school. Here's an ode to Bobby. Bobby started a fight club in the cafeteria lunchrooms and it ran pretty successfully for a few weeks before being shut down by administrators. People would skip class to learn to fight in his fight club. Kids would come out of the bathrooms beaten and all disheveled. He somehow didn't get reprimanded for this. Bobby and another friend started doing parkour around the campus in the early mornings and during lunch. They eventually graduated from benches to 7 foot pillars, but then they soon evolved to jumping off the second story. Parker soon came to an end for Bobby when he jumped off the bus loop overhang, which had a peak that was 8 foot higher in elevation compared to what he normally was jumping off and fractured the fuck out of his shin bone. He never got it looked at and continued to walk and ride his bike 30 miles a day regardless. One day he thought it was a great idea to draw a swastika on his forehead after shaving his head and eyebrows off and go to school like that. He got beat up by this Jewish kid. One time in his guitar class he literally shit in the trash can in the corner of the class and people saw him do it and remained quiet until the teacher smelled it. After the Parker days, he would sit in the circular planters near the office, which had palm trees and he would study the different ants colonies, eventually tried collecting one colony and made it fight another one. People would crowd around him as he did this. He found out how to get free Gatorades and sodas by running at full speed and tackling the vending machines outside the gym. He hit it so hard the damn thing would rock back and forth, depositing 2-3 two to three drinks each time. He also definitely smoked weed in classes and around the school and never got caught as well. I'm sure there's definitely more. Being his friend was a wild ride, Lmao. I went to a smaller high school, 80 people in my graduating class, and we had several suicides, one of which was a close friend of mine, and we had our share of students killed in car accidents and the like. I even had a friend who killed his abusive stepfather and then was put on trial and found innocent. The most fucked up thing I can remember happening though was during my junior year of high school. We had a special education teacher who was a complete jackass to all the students, special ed or not. That wasn't really anything out of the ordinary, since teachers are humans and some people are just jackasses. One day we came to school and jackass was gone and our vice principal was taking over his class. Turns out that jackass was really into some of the female special ed students. Some of the special ed students would stay after school or come in on weekends for what were supposedly tutoring sessions. In reality he draped them and he'd managed to intimidate them into staying quiet about it for a long time. He had his own office attached to the special ed classroom and he'd take them in there to do it and just hang a sign so the janitorial staff wouldn't try to come in and empty the trash or something. He got caught because one day he forget to hang the sign and the janitor walked in on him with the poor girl gagged, handcuffed, and bent over his desk. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Please leave a like and subscribe.